right out of the parking lot, you've got a very steep incline up the base trail. But as uh, aggressive a start as this is, I much prefer this to the old way where you had to just follow the uh, access road. But I think the base trail is far more worthwhile, even if it does get you sucking wind more quickly than the other option. Of course, if you're in better shape than I am, which is probably a lot of people, it's not quite so uh, <laughs> arduous, but uh, yeah, I need to get my hiking lungs back. I tend to start way too aggressively, uh, too much speed when I start hiking. Yeah, today's no different. I'm paying for it now, but another 20 minutes, half an hour, I suspect I'll get uh, a second or third or fourth wind. It seems I've come to a slightly more even section of the trail. Yeah, like I said, you get a lot of up right out of the parking lot. We'll get a little bit of this before another push up. Uh, and then sometime after that, we should hit the, the access road. About uh, two tenths of a mile to the ranger station slash I don't know if it's even a store or if it ever was a store. Once upon a time, there used to be uh, displays, a little bit of the uh, ecology types of critters that uh, you might see in this area or might not see, but we're still known to frequent these places. But the last, last several years that I've come out here, that place has been boarded up. There is still a, uh, a sign-in notebook. All right, I figured I would slow down here for a minute. You've got your summit trail to the left, which we'll definitely be taking in just a moment. But before we head up to the summit trail, we're gonna take this brief detour to the Greenwood Pond Overlook. Right down below us is Greenwood Pond. Uh, you know, it could be a little tempting to just take the access road, but it's really not worth it. So we're going to go back up the up to the base trail, finish it out that way. Now you can kind of feel that we're coming down off of the higher elevation on the base trail. So I suspect that we are not that far from the access road again. But like I said earlier, 
the views, the terrain, the atmosphere is just so much better, so much greener, so much more invigorating and inviting than coming up that road by yourself. I guess by itself. Base trail to parking lot. Well, that's where we just came from. There's the access road. And here's more access road. So let's take this for another two tenths, give or take, until we reach the ranger station. There's the visitor center. It does appear to be open. That's nice. I'm actually looking forward to that. But before we head in there, I want to head up Peregrine Ridge. In all the years that I have lived in the area or taken the summit trail, I have never stopped to explore Peregrine Ridge. So today's a great day to do that. So let's go. Back in the maybe late 70s, early 80s, somewhere in that uh, time frame, I know the Maine Audubon Society had a peregrine falcon rehabilitation program that uh, took place in this area. And back then, well, mid to late 80s for me, the uh, this uh, section would have been off limits because of those re rehabilitation efforts. So that's one reason why I haven't been out here before. But that uh, program ended probably decades ago. And I've been back several times since then, just never, never thought to actually check out these little side trails. So I'm glad I'm getting the opportunity to do that today. I, I can't believe I've never come up here before. I mean, these, this perspective is, it's gorgeous. So here's the end of what's called Sunset Pond. It is the last of three. We uh, pan around and see the length of midday and in the Upper center, you can maybe make out the uh, par uh, portion of uh, what's called a Sunrise Pond. And of course, right in the center, top center third, you can see the west peak of Borestone itself. Yeah, this, this view is amazing. This precipice is pretty amazing too. I don't know, some sun in my eyes, so I'm not sure if you can really get a better glimpse of the scale with me in it or not. This, this is gorgeous. We're not that far past the visitor center, and as you can see, it's rocky but relatively level coming through here. That is about to change. We will get through this rocky stuff, 
and then we start a very steep ascent toward the west peak so we're going to enjoy this relative leisurely stroll while we can and then we're gonna start to pant harder again So we are just about out of the, the forest portion of the trail. And despite its relatively low elevation, Forest Stone's not even 2,000 feet, it's pretty close. But you still get some balds, some exposed 360 degree views from both peaks. So uh, we'll be heading up that. We are just about at the top of the West Peak. Looking out, you can see sunset, midday, and maybe through the trees, a little bit of sunrise. But those are those ponds we were visiting not too long ago. And those uh, sheer faces up uh, roughly center, center of the screen. That is the, the terminus of uh, Peregrine Ridge, where we were earlier looking down into sunset, that amazing spring-fed blue water. We are coming down off of the West Peak, back down below the tree line, and this will take us maybe 15, 20 minutes at the most, just to kind of get down, get back up. Then we'll be out at the East Peak, and we'll take a little bit of a break there. One of the nice things about the, the East Summit is there's... Uh, I don't know the technical term, I mean, I guess map works <laughs> as well as anything else. But there is a map, so if you're standing on one side of it, it uh, has degrees and arrows that point to various other locations so you can see what uh, mountains you're looking at, uh, what uh, regions. Um. So this is the East Peak or the True Summit. And down below us is Onawa. Onawa Lake. And if you look out in the distance, you may be able to make out the Onawa Trestle, which is still active today. A Canadian railroad runs uh, lines across that. Not frequently, but on occasion, trains do still use that railway. Uh, looking out just below the horizon line there, you can see Sebec Lake. And then the other half of Onawa and the trestle just in the, uh, maybe the top right third. And Barren Mountain across the lake there and you can just make out the slide or the ledges those are really cool places to explore.
right. Well, we're at the Fox Pen Loop Trail. It uh, might be a little hard to make out, but the uh, big greenwood pond. All right. I missed the turnout to the base trail on the way down because I was talking to my mom. Uh, but here's a little bit of the access road. You know, it's a crushed rock road. Steep in places still. It's a, a punishment for your knees if uh, your knees are old and busted like mine. Here's where we should have come out, where uh, we started. But, uh, oh well, we're about to walk through the gate here. All right, well, I... Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this little tour of Borstone Mountain, and I'll see you next time.